Hi, I'm Keith Langergraver. The title of this exhibit is Theater of the Exploding Sun. I'm a Vancouver-based artist. The title of the exhibition refers to um, a technique that I use within a lot of the films where you're seeing my character, my alter ego, Eton Karasable, this accidental time traveler, and every time he seems to shift and uh, make these, these quick jumps in time, it's usually associated with shots where we have the sun rippling off a body of water. It was sort of a dramatic device I used where I can create a quick transition and an easy special effect. And um, it also refers um, to the late artist Robert Smithson, who, along with building the spiral jetty, a very famous earthwork in Utah at the Great Salt Lake in Utah, he wanted to build a theater in which there would be a film playing underground of the construction of the spiral jetty. Also, he planned on building a theater at Britannia Beach Mine on the way to Whistler, a project where he wanted to build an actual movie theater within the mine itself, which I found very interesting. So I play upon that in the first film of the trilogy where my character enters a, a grotto cave and um, there's, he actually encounters this theater that um, involved uh, a generator and uh, about 300 meters of uh, extension cords to get lighting and building the set within an actual cave itself. So yeah, it's built into the, the film series, this theater of the exploding sun. And a, you know, a catchy sci-fi sort of title. I tend to refer to myself more as a site-specific artist than using the moniker of installation artist because um, with each exhibit I have to reorient the work to the architecture of the gallery. Um, thematically of course that becomes important but you know around the meat and potatoes of it you, you, you start to have to get thinking about square footage, relationships of work, sight lines. Um, when you get into video you got to start it paying attention to acoustics, lighting, and um, that keeps things interesting for me. Like really this is going to be quite a different show than the show that just happened in Kelowna and it, that will continue with Lethbridge. Um, but I, I think with uh, the show being in the lower mainland here at Richmond, um, there'll be some interesting um, oral histories that could be talked about, particularly around Smithson's visits to Richmond. Um, that, that was one of the main reasons why I wanted this work to come to Richmond, is um, that to, that visit that he made was, I think, quite significant to the art history of uh, the Lower Mainland. Robert Smithson built the spiral jetty in the Great Salt Lake of Utah. Um, at a time when there was a movement within the art world to challenge the commodi commodifying systems of the gallery so that art is completely designed to be produced and then sold within the institution. So a lot of these artists like Robert Smithson, Nancy Holt, Michael Heiser, uh, Richard Long, they went out into the, um, particularly to the southwestern United States area and started working within deserts and places where you wouldn't necessarily get many viewers to come out. Walter Damari has lightning fields, but the spi a spiral jetty became um, a catalyst for me because I've always been a fan of the work and Smithson's concept of entropy so that this work was constantly changing and shifting. Um, the jetty after it was built disappeared for, for several years when the water levels of the Great Salt Lake rose and covered the thing. Um, and when they receded, uh, what was quite fantastic is the whole jetty is covered in salt crystals. And, um, and the, there's these interesting metal layers to the spiral jetty. If you magnify one of those salt crystals, 
itself, it forms a spiral helix. So <coughs> you're seeing this representation of the larger, um, and, he, and he was even equating it with uh, spiral galaxies. So we have these, j just these huge shifts in scale. But um, Smithson became interest to me with this project because he was a science fiction fan as well. And for in the 60s, the spiral itself became this trope for time travel. You'd see it in shows like Doctor Who and Star Trek. And um, he wrote about time travel in his um, essay he wrote a year before building the spiral jetty, the shape of the future and memory. So he himself were, was interested in the idea and notions of the nonlinearity of time. And um, I use that as a vehicle to sort of bridge the gap between the art world and the science fiction world. And uh, there's been many artists that have been interested in science fiction and then flirted with science fiction in their work. But I think it's, um, it's quite important to the sort of layers of Vancouver, this, um, and the lower, man, lower mainland, this sort of um, recontextualizing of the landscape by these film companies. So Vancouver, when Smithson wrote about it, when he visited here in 1969, he referred to it as the scene of no scene. And, and, and it kind of is very appropriate that these Hollywood companies come in and they see this blank tabla rasa and you know, you can turn it into the Bronx, you can turn it into a location from San Francisco, um, or at these alien planets and landscapes that have been happening. So um, I think that's a big part of my interest in Smithson. He was such an important landscape, landscape artist. He had such a connection with the Lower Mainland, and particularly with Richmond as, itself. Um, Smithson visited with the writer Dennis Wheeler, the Ionia Jetty in Richmond one year before he actually went to the Great Salt Lake and built the Spiral Jetty. And he had one other failed project that happened at Miami Island. He wanted to build an island of broken glass, um, which was never completed, but um, you'll see my version, my analog of it in the gallery. So I, I like to, uh, you know, be very pluralistic, use lots of mediums. Um, I'm very uncomfortable sticking with one medium when I want to create an installation. I don't feel one idea can really sum up my relationship to the subject matter. And I like to fragment meaning through different media. So drawing, film, sculpture. Sometimes you see drawing on the wall or animated within the film. And through that, I cr try and create these ruptures of aesthetics through installation so that you see very traditional mediums such as drawing juxtaposed against very um, high mediums that ha are usually associated with higher production value so slick digital prints um, high definition video and I try and mash those up together through installation when an installation is sort of this combination of different mediums so that you're creating more of an environment rather than just discrete sculptural um, moments within the gallery. So um, I, I think that's, that's kind of what I'm trying to create is these different temporalities as well within the gallery space, which I think reflects on this whole theme of science fiction and non-linearity within time so that the viewer, if, when um, one enters the hexagonal space at the back of the gallery, they get a very different experience than walking through the entrance of the gallery where you start off with a body of photographs and you walk past some sculptures. But then again, I convolute that space with another video projection and I try and create a dialectic or a relationship between all these elements but I'm not interested in these things matching up succinctly. I, I like there to be gaps in knowledge that the viewer is going to fill with their own cosmology and experience.